Well, it's a new year, which means you and probably most of the people around you have made some sort of resolution or intention or word for 2024. And now you are in the mindset of how do I make that happen? What does that actually mean to me? What will it take to achieve that? And if one of those resolutions or goals is around having or starting a handmade good business, you're probably wondering to yourself, is this going to be worth it? Is starting this business that I have in mind going to take me where I actually want to go? Or is it another thing I'm going to start and then feel like it wasn't worth the effort or it's way more work than I anticipated or it's not worth the income that I'm generating from it. And I wanted to make a video today to talk a little bit about 2023 and 2022 and 2021, which is when I started my business and what that period of time has looked like for me in terms of profitability, but also what I think someone should know if they're hoping to start a profitable handmade goods business in 2024. If you're new to my channel, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Steph. My company is Bushel and I make things that smell good. I started my business in 2021. August of 2021 is when I launched Bushel with just soap. I think I had like eight different scents, three of which were seasonal. And then ever since then, I've added candles, shower steamers, lip balm, perfume, uh, what else? And I love it. And I feel like it's definitely going the direction I want it to. But I also feel like there's so much that I did not know about running a business like this, but also the idea of profitability and what it takes to get there, what it takes to achieve a certain level of profit that would actually replace a full time income or whatever your goal may be. When it comes to the question of like, is it possible to start a profitable brand like this that makes these types of products or even just one of the products that I make? The answer is definitely yes. Like the short answer is yes, I do believe it's, it's definitely possible to make a profitable business. But the long answer, which I guess is just the length of this video is there's so much nuance to that yes. There's so many things that sort of factor into what will profitability actually look like? What will that lifestyle look like? What will that workload look like? That I wanted to talk a little bit more about those specifics so that you could maybe get like a more well-rounded idea of whether or not this is something you might wanna pursue if that's what you're looking for. The first thing I think to consider is the timeline of profitability. Because when I started this business, I knew that a sort of general rule of thumb for businesses is to not expect profitability before three to five years. Even though I had heard that many times, especially for a business where you need a lot of capital to either get it started, like a restaurant or I don't know, a dentist's office or, you know, someplace where you have to like buy a bunch of stuff to make it happen or renovate a space. I knew that like that was a very realistic assessment of profitability, but I still was kind of, I don't know, naive is like a nice way to say it. I think in some ways it's just kind of <laughs> was egotistical thinking like, well, that I can make that happen sooner. But now that I'm two and a half years into this business, that timeline is very real. I do not have a profitable business yet, mostly because I still have debt to pay down because I, I have a separate studio space from my home, which for me is a requirement to continue this business. My house is not big enough to have to dedicate like a separate room to or a basement to or a garage to. I mean, I also live in Wisconsin, so the business would basically be put on hold once it gets cold out and that's not an option. So I have a lot of expenses that I, I feel I need in order to actually have this business. I'm sure there are people who would think that's not the best business decision that I should have been operating this out of my home until I could find a separate space. But I know myself well enough to know that this business would not still exist if I were trying to squeeze it all into my home where me, my husband and both of my young kids live. It's just not sustainable. And so I do have the cost of rent to consider. I also bought a decent amount of equipment that I wanted because 
again, it makes the process easier. There are a lot of people who want to start off super lean so that they can make money right away. And I think that's great. I would certainly encourage someone if they felt that they were capable of that to do it that way. That's fantastic. But I also think that I just think if you live somewhere where you have a lot of square footage in your home, maybe you live in a more rural area and real estate is more affordable. And so you have a lot of space. That's great. But for me, I wanted to invest this money up front because I do believe in the long term viability of this business. I had to be honest with myself about what I was capable of executing from my home and when I got to sort of like a, a breaking point with that I looked for a new space so because of that I have more I have a lot more monthly expenses I have utilities that I have to pay here I pay for internet because I use I ship from here so I need to access the internet so that I can print off my labels for either wholesale orders or online orders and I need to be ordering uh, supplies. So I do have all of that stuff here. So that's something that's really extending the timeline for me and putting off profitability. And I know that that's the, and that's a choice that I consciously made. So I'm okay with that. But I also think that's something that I would want people to be really honest with themselves about up front in terms of do they have the space already for free somewhere that they can do this? If so, that's great and take advantage of it for as long as you can. But also know that if this is something where you think you're going to need a separate workspace, be realistic about factoring that cost into your monthly expenses and determining how much longer it'll take you to be profitable because of that. I also think people need to be realistic about volume, like the pure amount of things that you will need to make in order to make the amount of money that you have in mind for yourself. I make like lower priced items. They're kind of on the higher end for the category, but in general, like a bar of soap that I sell is $11. A pack of shower steamers is $24. A lip balm is $5. They're small price items because that's what the market dictates. And so even though I have pretty good margins on all of my products, it's still not a ton of money per item. And so I have to think about if I wanted to make $2,000 a month, let's say, just randomly picking that number, I need to consider what's the profit that I make per bar of soap or per candle tin and calculate how many of those I would actually need to make it to $2,000 a month because it's a lot. And also not only do you need to make those, you need to sell that many. When you're a brand new company and you're introducing yourself to stores, they're not going to be ordering a thousand units from you right off the bat. Like they're going to ease into the trial and error of whether your brand works for them. Even individuals, you have to build up some sort of marketing presence, whether it's paid advertising or an organic social media following. It's rare to be able to really blow up overnight and go viral. So if you do, fantastic. You cannot bank on that when you're starting a business because it's kind of hard to know how that's going to happen. Knowing what volume of things you need to make to reach the level of income you're hoping for will help just create a more realistic expectation of what pr your production schedule is going to look like. It's also good to think about how long does it actually take me to make a thousand units of something? Like what is that process going to be like and how much time will I need to set aside each month just for production if I'm planning to make this much money. And especially if you're someone who's doing this in addition to another full-time job or multiple part-time jobs, or if you're a parent and you're doing this when your kids aren't with you like I am, it's your time is pretty limited and you have to be realistic about, is this something that I can work into my existing schedule? What will it look like to produce a volume of products that gets me to the income that I want? And then the other thing that I think people should really factor in is just the lifestyle of a brand like this. Production can get very repetitive. It's something that I've struggled with. I have ADHD, which I've talked about in some of my other videos. And so doing something that I've already feel I've mastered and have done a bunch of times 
becomes really hard for me to do without a lot of resistance. I Once I am not mentally stimulated by the process, it's hard for me to get it done. And because of that, I am sort of always trying to find new things to do within my business, which works for me for now, but I don't know how sustainable it is long term. And I have to figure out like, what are my workarounds for when I am kind of at my wits end about doing X, Y, Z, whatever task it is, whether it's production or something else related to the business, how do I make myself do it when I don't feel like, when I don't feel engaged by that work. So that's one aspect of it. But there's also a lot of rejection. There's a lot of selling yourself at markets and not meeting sales. There's a lot of people who will come right up to your table full of products that you lovingly put your blood, sweat and tears into and just say unkind things about what you do right to your face. I'm not sure where that boldness comes from, but I've gotten it enough times to know that it is very much present in the world. So that's something that is a very, a big part of this. There's, um, pitching yourselves to store owners can be really awkward and something that is again, like a thing that you kind of have to do when you're starting off, especially if you want to make a bunch of sales, you want to be profitable, you're going to need to like really put yourself out there. So if that's something that is not a fit with your personality, I totally get it. It is to me, one of the hardest parts of this job. And I now have gotten to a point where I really love working with fair because I feel like a lot of that, my products are sort of speaking for themselves. I don't have to do much pitching. I just have to keep my website up to date, but I've also had a lot of rejection and it's, it's awkward and I don't love it. And so it's, it's one of those things that you really have to psych yourself up for and keep that in mind. Another thing that I think fits into the lifestyle category is do you, how big do you want this company to be? Because eventually if you really want to be profitable and you really want to build a sort of sustainable income for yourself, it's likely that the business will be bigger than just you you're probably going to need employees of some kind because there is no large company in a product-based business that is just one person doing everything, at least not to my knowledge, especially in this area, the soap candle. If you look at some of the major companies doing this, it's, it's a team of people, sometimes a large team of people. And so if you are not someone who wants to manage other people, you might get into this kind of work because you don't like managing people. You want to do something just yourself. You like the alone time. You like the process of making products and you like that you are the one in control of everything and it's just you. But eventually, if you want this to scale up, you can't clone yourself. So eventually scaling up is probably going to mean hiring employees or outsourcing production. That's another option. But one way or another, it can't be just you making every single item unless you want to stay at a certain level and that there's nothing wrong with that. I just with profitability being sort of the focus of this video, I want people to consider what it means to be an entrepreneur versus what is essentially kind of a freelancer. If you are trading your labor for money, which is what making a product basically is, you have to make everything you sell. A freelancer who's really service based might be able to keep hiking up that price. But with a lot of products like this, you're eventually going to max out because the market dictates that a six ounce candle can only cost so much before people expect a lot more from the experience than just a candle. And sometimes that experience is status like Diptyque or Flamingo Estate or one of those that is a luxury brand. But again, that's not a single person running those brands. So you have to keep in mind that what is the business model you want to create? And are you interested in being the person in charge of that business model? Now, all of these things I'm mentioning, you can get started with a business and not necessarily know exactly where you want it to go. I think it really helps 
to have an idea of where it's going. But if you love making something and you really want to sell it, I don't think you should stay just like frozen while you wait to figure out all of these big picture things. I think sometimes as much as you want to plan out every little item of a business, it's really hard to do that before you get started. Sometimes you're in the business and things are different than you expected and you just have to pivot once it's already going. So don't let any of this stop you from experimenting. It's really easy to put some stuff up on Etsy, see how it goes, see how it feels to sell your items that you've made and how like whether it lights you up or stresses you out. But these are things that I wish I had been more realistic about when I was considering profitability. I love what I do. I'm so happy to have this business and I feel really grateful for where it's gone in the past like in the past two and a half years. But this is just my advice as someone who might be slightly further along than you. So hopefully that is helpful and not discouraging. <laughs> I am making choices that I think other people might not make because they are perhaps impulsive. Again, ADHD, this is where that comes in. But I feel, I feel pretty good about where the business is going. And I think that I am now challenging myself to think in new ways that I really hadn't considered before. And this, the sales that I have are forcing me out of my comfort zone to think more like an entrepreneur and less like somebody who just conveniently turned a hobby into a business. Like it's now more than that. And I'm excited to challenge myself to figure out those, the elements of all of that. So I hope this was helpful. If you are interested in starting a business of your own, a handmade goods business especially, please tell me more in the comments. I love cheering you all on because this really is something where I think the more people doing it, the better. I want small businesses to get the recognition they deserve and the support they deserve. And I appreciate you watching this and I hope that you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video.